Hey everyone, it's Lisa Bonjean from Primitive Gatherings and I have a super fun tutorial for you today. My friend Kathy Decker, say hi Hello. Kathy, <laughs> is here to show us how to do expert t-shirt quilting. <music> Kathy's going to explain all her tips and tricks for you to get the perfect t-shirt quilt the first time instead of going through all the trial and error. She's going to take the mystery out of how to do a t-shirt quilt. Okay. So, Kathy, Thanks. welcome. Thanks. Welcome. Thanks. It's awesome. great, to, great to be here in this nice new studio. This is the first yeah. time I filmed in Look here. Look at how beautiful this looks here. This is my t-shirt quilt that I made. My friend um, from childhood asked me if I would make a t-shirt quilt for her with her mother's t-shirts and sweatshirts. Her mother passed away a couple years ago and her mother and my mother were best friends for 55 years. Oh, how sweet. So of course I said yes. My friend has, um, her career has been in sports. So she took her mom to a lot of these um, district championships and the final four and that sort of thing. Um, these these uh, t-shirts were kind of special to her. I think um, Kathy was a coach at Culver Stockton and this one says coach's mom. So I'm sure that one got a lot of use uh, a long time ago, uh -huh. actually, back in the 90s. Cool. So, um, yeah, talk about the pillows too while we're at well, it. Well, I had a few extra t-shirts and so I'd made pillows out of those. Um, this one I just kind of missed when I was making the shirt. I, I saw the, it had this little Turtle Bay logo and I thought that was it. And then when I turned the t-shirt over, there was oh. a big logo on the back. So those got made into pillows and those actually turned out pretty well. And then this one was a sweatshirt that, um, was a little bit big for the quilt and this one was a t-shirt that was a little big for the quilt. So I thought, you know, pillows would be nice to, to kind of go with it. And if you're making a memory, um, memory quilt and pillows for the family, you might only have a few shirts and this way you could give one for each grandchild, grandchild or, or whatever. So yeah. the, the pillows, you use the same technique as far as preparing the t-shirts and then you just make it into a pillow using that uh, tutorial that you've got and we'll link that too to put the, the zipper back in. I think it's a great idea for like if somebody passes away and like maybe there's like lots of grandchildren and maybe they got one of grandpa's right. shirts or whatever. The pillows are a great idea because then they can snuggle and right. cuddle and when they miss that person, I think that's a great idea to show how the pillows can also be used. Right. So okay. we'll, we'll get started. Um, you don't need a lot of supplies to make a t-shirt quilt. You need, of course, a, a stack of t-shirts. And in this one, I used t-shirts and sweatshirts, and I even had one sweater. So it some of like these are knitted. sweatshirts even. Some of them are sweatshirts. Okay. This one's a sweatshirt. And um, I just used the same technique, and that worked okay. Um, so I wouldn't hesitate to um, use whatever t-shirts and sweatshirts you have. The only thing I would caution you about, like on this one, this, the, that's one of those heavy uh, embroidered. embroidered. And if you're going to have it long-armed and they're doing an edge-to-edge, -edge, you might want to avoid putting in the heavy embroidery ones. Okay. Those would be better pillows. <laughs> they would. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I would do for that. Um, but as far as uh, these uh, with the vinyl logos, I think the edge-to-edge -edge quilting could still go over that. I didn't um, for the most part, but I think if you want to have it quilted, and, and I think probably um, Luke and Jake are mm -hmm. doing t-shirt quilts too. Yeah, they so, have done some already. Yep. So if people mm -hmm. make a t-shirt quilt, they could send them to them and have an edge-to-edge, -edge and that would and be I fun too. And I think what happens sometimes when you do edge-to-edge -edge over those that dense printing, what would happen is, worst case scenario, if it did skip some stitches, you just have to go back over on your machine, right. your home machine, and just go over like where it missed. Right. That's what I'd have to done on a couple things like that. Awesome. So you're going to show us. I mean, show you how to there's prepare techniques your shirts. for yeah, t-shirts. There is a technique, yeah. and um, I'm going to show you how to prepare your shirts and then make them into a block. So, so we'll start out with one shirt, and we'll finish up with a block like this, and then you just repeat that for however many blocks you, you need to make, and then I'll show you how I designed the quilt a little bit too. So we'll have a couple parts here. Yep. Okay. So I'm, I, I had so much fun making this one for Kathy that I'm making one now finally, 20 years later, for my kids. So it's never this, too late. This stuff that's been in a box in the closet all these years. So for, for mine, I'm using um, their t-shirts, of course, and then I'm using two prints from the uh, Urban Farmhouse, the, this um, 
white will be the cream color will be the background for mine and then this gray will be the frame around the t-shirts and then I use the black Bella solid for the shadow box effect. so yeah so that's kind of the design of your whole quilt is like the shadow box right design how it kind of right. pushes the t-shirt out right it makes it looks like it has some depth it's a very easy block to make Right. Okay, so what you need then is you need t-shirts, you need the fusible interfacing. And what you want is a, a cotton fusible interfacing. I like this June Taylor um, t-shirt quilt fusible. And what that is, it's in a big, a big piece. It's uh, 60 by 72. So you've got a giant piece and you just cut off the size you need. And I found that to be more useful than the um, by the yard stuff. So this is fusible on one side. It's fusible. Yep, it has a rough side and then a smooth side. The rough side goes down so to the back of, of the t-shirt. Right? It's cotton, right? Yeah, it's cotton. And it's mm -hmm. woven, isn't mm -hmm. it? It's okay. woven. So it won't stretch. Once you've got it on your t-shirts, they won't stretch and you can just treat them like... Yeah, because um, that's what happens when you make a t-shirt quilt without putting some sort right. of interfacing on it. It's just a nightmare. So the, right. what Kathy's going to explain to you is how to prep these t-shirts so you have really good success in making blocks out of them. And everything she's going to tell you about here is going to be linked in the description under this video. So look for all of that in those links and you'll be able to buy any of this stuff that you need for the t-shirt quilt. Okay. Awesome. So we, t we talked about the fusible. You also need a t-shirt pressing cloth and this is pretty critical. And I like this June Taylor one. It's, it's just a small thin cotton pressing cloth and you'll um, use it damp. So, I've so already... is that all in the instructions on how to, that you have to use it damp? I never heard mm -hmm. of that. Yeah. Oh wow. Um, I don't cool. know if it says that on here. So it says it prevents melting. Yeah, cover interfacing with damp press cloth. Okay. Yep. Well, we're going to find out how she does okay. it. Okay. Cool. So to prepare your t-shirts, um, you don't have to keep them in a box for 20 years first, <laughs> but I did. Um, once I got them out, I washed them all in um, just in the washer and dryer. Just use soap. Don't use any fabric softener or dryer sheets or anything like that. Um, the dryer sheets kind of leave a little bit of a residue on them and then your interfacing mm -hmm. might not stick as well. So you really want them clean and um, no no products on them. No products, so yeah, yeah, I see what you mean, yeah. And some of this, um, some of mine had been worn quite a bit and had some stains and I used um, RetroClean. I just soaked them overnight in that and then ran them through the washer. Oh. And I think that helped a little bit too. Okay. So we're going to, um, I should say too, there is one other fusible that I tried out and it's this Pellon SF 101. And so if you don't, you know, if you've only got a couple shirts and you don't want to buy a whole uh, 60 by 72 inch piece, this is available by the yard at Primitive Gatherings. And uh, so it, it's a similar product and, and I had about the same results with that too. Mm -hmm. So now the important thing is to prepare your shirt. So just tell me what to do, okay? Okay. <laughs> I don't have to do anything yet. You can okay. just watch for now. All right. I'll try to ask some questions okay. like maybe you'd be answer asking. Take a look at your shirts. And this is one critical step I missed on that Turtle Bay one. This one has a, a cute logo on the front. It also has a cute logo on the oh, back. Double-sided. So some of them you may get two blocks out of or even three if they have something on the arm. So I'm going to use, this one has a really big logo on the front and then a smaller one on the back. And I'm going to use the back one today to, to show you how to do this. So to, to get ready, take your shirt and just cut up the side and next to the sleeve. I'm just cutting the shirt in half so that I have a flat um, shirt front or back to work on. Once you get to the arm, just cut across the shoulder seam and right through the neck. They can use your rotary cutters too, right? You could. I, it's going to be hard on something circular like oh, this. Oh, I suppose, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. you, you can. Once you get it flat, then you can cut off the Yeah, other we'll, we'll yeah. use a rotary cutter for the rest of it. But for this, I, I felt a little more comfortable with scissors. Yeah. I don't want to ruin these after I saved them for 20 years, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to keep that one. And we're going to do this one. So now the next thing you want to do is figure out what 
um, size that you want to make this. You can, if you want to make it really easy on yourself, just cut them all 12 and a half inches or 10 and a half inches or whatever. I'm going to cut mine custom size because I, I like that better because that way I just got the logo, a little bit of space around the logo, and that's it. I don't have a lot of extra shirt because some, some shirts just have a small logo here. If you do a 12 and a half, you've got a lot of extra negative space, negative space. Mm -hmm. right. So this logo is, let's get rid of some of this stuff. This logo is about 11 and a half wide and eight tall. So I'm going to make it 14 and a half by 12 and a half. So in order to do that, so are you adding like the same amount right. of inches to each all the way around? Yep. Okay. Let me get my calculator because I don't want to do math you in my head when we're, when we're on camera and all. So, so this um, logo is eight inches tall. I want it to be 11 or um, 12 and a half tall. So that's four and a half inches difference, right? Mm -hmm. At 12 and a half minus eight. eight. So that'd be two and a quarter that I want to have above and below the logo. So I'm going to take some of these magic pins. You need a heat resistant pin because we're going to be ironing on that. So I'm just going to mark. And you don't have to be super precise on this because this is just giving us a target for our interfacing when we turn it over. So I'm making this 12 and a half. And then I'm making it 14 and a half wide. Now I used my 18 and a half inch square ruler a lot on this quilt. If you don't have one of these, this is a, a great yeah, ruler to add to 18 and a half or 20, I think, and a half right. they come. You have this from um, Twilight Garden. Twilight Garden, yeah, <laughs> Twilight, yeah, but I'm, I'm still working on before yeah. you ask. <laughs> so I want it to be 14 and a half. My logo is 11 and a half, so that's three. So I'll have an inch and a half on each side. Okay. So she's splitting the difference is what right. she's saying. Yep. Yeah, actually measuring all this out is the hardest part of the whole yeah, process. Yeah, it's all the figuring. And then you're going to explain later on how you're going to set your whole quilt with all these different sizes. Right. So don't, mm -hmm. don't panic. It doesn't matter right now. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I've got pins that show me kind of roughly what my logo will be like. So if I'm happy with that, then I'm ready to start fusing. So turn your your t-shirt over and we'll put the interfacing on. You want the interfacing about an inch and a half bigger than the uh, logo size that you're going to make. So I cut my fusible interfacing here 16 by 14. And you'll know if it's big enough when you lay it out, you should be able to feel these pins under here. You want to make sure that you cover past the pins. And that way, when we go to trim this, we know that there's interfacing behind all of it. Okay? Mm -hmm. So then you'll take your um, dampened press cloth and place that over that. Kind of smooth everything down. Um, the fusible gets a little wrinkled, but you can't iron it because it's fusible. So you just kind of have to smooth it out and it'll be fine. So I'm going to put my press cloth here. Now this is the dull part of making a t-shirt quilt. <laughs> you have to do 10 seconds over the entire piece of fusible. So you're going to have, you know, your iron is this shape. This is a big square. So you're going to have to put the iron here for 10 seconds, here, 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 move it like that. Is it okay if it gets more, like when you overlap? It is, yeah. Okay. I overlapped them a little. Okay. But what I did to help with this part, I downloaded an interval timer. And I'll show that to Kaylee so that she can... An interval timer is it's for exercising, but it worked great for this. Much better than exercise. Much better than exercise, yeah. <laughs> so what I did was I put, for my work, I have 10 seconds. Rest between sets, one second. And then how many sets, just do a, a fairly large number. Uh, 20 will be more than we need for this size of a logo. So this will count down 10, it'll count down five seconds. 
start and then count 10 seconds, then it beeps, and then the whistle blows, and then you do it another Ooh, 10. It is like sports. It is. It's a lot better than watching the clock or counting Mississippi. Okay. <laughs> okay, so let's All start. Right. Can you hear that okay? Yep. I'm sure my mic is picking it okay, up. Okay, that was the whistle. So I'm putting my iron here on the no just steam, on the right? top You're corner. The no heat. steam. Okay. The press cloth does that for you. Okay, there's Ooh, a whistle. You can again. tell where you're at because uh -huh, it flattens yeah. out. Right. Oh, okay. You can tell where you are because the um, pressing cloth. The pressing cloth gets dry. This is kind of sports and we're all everybody's gonna love. <laughs> it made it a lot more interesting than trying to watch the clock. I bet. And if you had a teenager you're doing this for, you can outsource this part to them. <laughs> as long right? as a child is Get old enough help. to do the iron. Yeah. Um, they can do this part. Now when I did this, I missed some little areas up here. You can kind of see where these V marks are because the, the shape of the iron. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that again. So now that your fusible interfacing is on, you can see it's, it's pretty well attached. It's not going to come off. So now we'll trim it. Flip it over, take your pins out. And trim this. If you're designing your quilt, you want to design these blocks to be in whole inches. So we'll make it in, in whole inches and then we'll add a half inch so that we have the quarter inch seam allowance all the way around. So I'm going to cut this 14 by 16. So I'm going to cut all the way across the top there with my rotary cutter now at this point. Of course you're going to need a nice sharp blade too. Right. And I really like these 60 millimeter rotary cutters too. I do too. My favorite. Once you use those you really don't go back to the 45s. Nope. You should link that too, Kaylee, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so now I said it would be 12 and a half. 12 and a half, so I'll put my 12 and a half inch mark on this one I already did. Cut across. And I'm making it 14 and a half wide. And my logo was, does anybody remember? 11 and a half, three, so it'd be one and a half um, on each side. So I'm just gonna line my ruler up with that cut line I already had. Cut this side. Like this, it's 14 and a half, so I can use my line over here for that part. So there's my logo, and it's centered, and it has interfacing all across the back. I didn't have to fudge to line anything up there. And it's really so, it works good too. It does. Yeah, it's I nice remember and flat. doing Look one, and it was half on and half off. And, yeah, you know. yeah, this works great. Yeah. So now. We're to the easy part. Now we'll just add, we'll take the, uh, the gray and add our frame around it, and then we'll add the um, shadow box effect. So for the frame around it, you would just um, measure this again. I think it was 12 and a half, right? 12 and a so half. I'm going to make two strips that are 12 and a half out of my gray. got some selvages on there so I'll have to cut that off. And Lisa's going to sew it for me. Hopefully, hopefully I won't screw it up. Yeah well we know where there's more fabric don't we? We do. I mean, we've got lots. We're good. <laughs> so we'll just take this and you can pin one side and I'll do the other if you want. I did use several pins on these because you don't want this sliding around on you when you're sewing it. And on this, it doesn't really matter whether you do the top and the bottom first and then the sides or the sides and then the top and the bottom, just whichever works out for you. 
When you're ready to sew this, then you want to lay it with the logo side down. So I used a piece of tissue paper to keep it from sticking to the, the sewing machine surface. So just kind of put, put a piece of tissue paper like that. And, and I'm sewing a quarter inch. So a quarter inch seam. You don't need a um, walking foot or anything. sides right I messed you up with my pinning I know I? you pin backwards <laughs> for me there. Once you've got this, um, those ironed on, you want to cover your logo again with your pressing cloth because you don't want the iron to be right on that vinyl. Press the seam flat to set the seam and then press it out towards the uh, sashing fabrics. The pressing down to set the seams just kind of relaxes the stitching, doesn't it? Or yeah, something gets a little with those two different types of fabric. Yeah. You really should do that all the time, though, shouldn't you? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you should. What you, you should, should do and you what should. you do do are different. Is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is 16 and a half wide now. So I'll cut two pieces 16 and a half wide. Look at that. I'm reading your mind. You, you are. That? Oh yeah, we gotta go in the middle. <laughs> gotta go up up high. I'm cutting this twice because there's selvages on that side. I don't want the selvage in my uh, quilt. So there's the 16 and a halfs. Put those top and bottom. Try it your way here if I can. It's hard to teach an old dog new tricks, though. <laughs> you don't have to. That's just kind of the way you're taught, right? You just right. always yep. do it that way. See, I wasn't taught anyway, and I just thought, hmm. You just did it the I'm way you did it. I'm going to put it this way so I can don't have to take them out while I'm stitching. I didn't know there were certain rules or people did things certain ways when I started doing this. All right, my paper there. does want to just grab, well, doesn't it? Well, on that actually, plastic. do it with this down. Oh, yeah. And that way you'll, you'll have less uh, <laughs> stretchy. I knew there was something yeah. weird. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> Teach a dog old, old dog <laughs> new tricks. Well, it seems to have worked out for you. I could tell that it was not. It, yeah, yeah, it, it, it kind of wants to bunch up a little yeah, bit I'm more. Like, it's probably like good a, that you did that so right. that everybody could see that there is a difference. It's like plowing snow. <laughs> there you go. All right, once again, we'll pull these pins out. And lay our press cloth on here and press those seams out also. 
And the reason I'm doing this, partly it, it just makes sense, but also that way you don't have double thicknesses, especially of the sweatshirts. You've only got the one thickness of t-shirt in your so seam. So is there a reason you're not using any steam on that? No. Oh, okay. You can use steam if you okay. want. I don't, I don't know. I'm just asking. I, I, don't, I don't feel the need. Okay. <laughs> Because I'm a steamer, you know Yeah, that. yeah. If you <laughs> like want it to, to I think you could steam now. Is that iron not on? Yeah, it's on. It's oh, on. Okay. Is it not doing well enough? Well, no. let's try. I don't know. Try a little steam. You just weren't pressing the button, that's all. I just didn't know. Okay, there. yeah, that made it flatter. <laughs> so steam if you want. So now we're ready to put the um, shadow box effect on. And for that, you'll need two one and a half inch um, squares. Everything we're doing here is one and a half inch strips. So when you go to cut your um, sashings for the, the block and for the, the uh, black for the shadow and for the, that you'll uh, cut one and a half. And then whatever measurement your t-shirt. And whatever on. measurement then you come out with. So there's those. So this, we'll do the side piece first. And that is 14 and a half. You want to subtract one inch from that. So we'll make this 13 and a half, and then we'll sew one of those onto the top of it. Right. And for so this one, one um, when you sew it, um, do a reverse stitch at the beginning and the end. Because okay. this is such a short seam that it tends to want to come undone All if right. you don't. So now one. So I can sew one of on those. these or yeah. not? So Lisa has sewn this for me, and it's this inch and a half square onto my inch and a half strip, and we're going to put that on the side. Um, we'll press that down to the black, and that way those seams will nest. We'll put that on there. Should go straight to the end, no problems. Now I am, I am kind of um, fudging my quarter inch here. Yeah, a little bit. I didn't have my quarter inch foot on, but <laughs> that's okay. It's, yeah. it's coming out close enough. This is fairly forgiving. And you know how me, I'm like a stickler for my quarter inch, so <laughs> this is like out of my comfort zone. But and at, at this point, you can sew it whichever direction you want, because you're not sewing on the t-shirt anymore. Okay. So you can either do it this side up or that side up. Okay. Your, your choice. I'll do this way. So once again, we'll press out, so cover that so that we don't hit it with the iron. Press the seam flat and then press out. And then, last one, we'll measure that bottom, bottom of the block, and that's 17 and a half, so this this black piece will be cut 16 and a half. You subtract one inch. Because here's it is. This is the other inch. That's right. way. This time there's nothing for this to nest against, um, so you'll just pin it on there. Okay. I can do that while you're doing one of the next okay. step. Well, this is kind of the end. Oh, okay. <laughs> We're so good. Yeah. Half hour in and we've made a complete block, right?
There you are. So once again, we'll cover this, set the seam, and then press it out. And that's a finished block. And then when you go to put this on your background pieces, these, um, the white just kind of disappears. And that way you get your shadow effect. So when you do it like that, see how that just kind of will blend into the background. Because you, you'll notice on these, you don't really see that square here on the, on the quilt. It just blends into the background. Yep. Okay. So that's it. No, you're going to tell them how to graph it out. How to graph it out. My extremely low tech. I thought this was genius how she okay. did this. You're, you do way more than I would ever do, but. <laughs> I don't do this very often, but when I need to, to graph out something like this, I just take this, I like this graph paper that's um, four, four squares to the inch. And on my quilt, then each square represents an inch. So I would make a big background. And you could tape these together. Yes, tape too. these together to make the size you want your quilt to be. So if you wanted it to be, say, 60 by 80, I would take two of these, tape them together so that the lines, so that there's 60 by 80, and then um, Use mark that Use one per off. inch? Mm -hmm. okay. And one per inch. And then what I did with my t-shirt quilt, I just cut out a piece of graph paper that was the same size as each of my t-shirt fronts with the um, border on it. So for example, this one was 15 by 17. So this piece of graph paper is 15 squares by 17 squares. I cut them all out and then I just kind of put them all together like a jigsaw puzzle, laid them out on my um, larger piece until I found an arrangement that looked like it would work for everything. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It can be no. just as long as it flows nicely, I think. Right. It works. And then this tells you how big your sashing strips have to be. So once you've got this, I, I stuck them down with double stick tape. So once they're down here, then I know that this has to be a three inch strip between these two blocks. So I would cut that three and a half yep. by whatever that is, 15 and a half. Mm -hmm. So remember, you, you're, you're doing everything in a full inch, but then you're adding your half inch for seam allowances. Right. So that's on any, every design that we stitch, that quarter inch is actually a half inch added to the whole right. measurement. And I know some of you are really good at that and some of you are not gonna be, but when you see it like this, it makes total sense. And just always remember to not mass cut. Cut one to make sure it's the right, right size before you do a ton of that, unless you're really confident, of course. Right. Once you've got it laid out like this, you kind of have to section it up and make it in sections. So I kind of just looked at it to see what would make sense. So for example, like these- where you could break yeah, it up. That's what these orange, I just drew on here with um, an orange colored pencil. Um, this would be a section. These two would be a section. And then I can just put these sashing strips on the side so that they're the same width then as the section above, and then I can join these two together. So what you're saying is your sashing is gonna change in different spots, right? right? Yes. It's like this one yep. is only two and a half here. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. Right. I see, and this here yep. it's bigger, it's like five and a half. But once it's all together, you don't even see yeah, really Yeah, you don't see that this are. is bigger than this. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. matter, yeah. Right. What you can do also, um, what do we do with our block? That's amazing, that's a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it really wasn't. I mean, a couple hours of yeah doing that. It's worth it though, right? Right. To do the pre-planning. Right. But what you can do, if you don't want to do that, just make all your blocks the same size, either 10 inches or 12 inches or whatever. And then just, you can still go ahead and put the, the shadow uh, effect on there and then just put two and a half inch uh, sashing strips on the side. Make a row, make a sashing strip that goes between, between. the rows. And you know, it'll, it'll all just be square then, but that's fine too. Yeah, yeah. Or you can, if you've got a, a quilt um, pattern, like that one uh, we did downstairs that has the star and the star and the star, mm -hmm. you could make the t-shirt portion be the center, center of the star. stars. Yeah, that's good, a great and idea. And so if you've got a, a pattern that you know you can adjust for that, you can use this as the center of a, like an Ohio star, star yep. or something mm -hmm. like that. That's a great idea, yeah. yeah. So the only thing that needs the interfacing is the t-shirt fabric. Right. Right. The rest of it, I did starch. Um, my 
my fabrics before I started. I didn't on this one, and I ended up regretting that. So I would recommend starching. So it just the, moves a little bit more, It right? does, yeah. and it doesn't ravel as much. This one, I had a lot of raveling problems when I was putting them together. So um, I would recommend the starching You wouldn't on start that. your t-shirts. No. <laughs> Don't put anything on the t-shirts, because you right. really want that interfacing to, to stick. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's it. And then you would just quilt it like you do any quilt. Um, I just outlined the, the frames in gray and outlined the shadows in black. And then I, I just used, um, you could use um, the invisible thread or a matching thread to just, I just meandered. I don't think quilt, t-shirt quilts, you probably want anything real fancy quilting. Just simple, yeah, is best. Yeah, because the t-shirts are the star. But you do, want it, you do want it to be overall kind of consistent. Right. Like it's okay if you miss this spot. Right, right, but just yeah. don't just don't leave like this whole big thing right. unquilted. Well, and there your um, batting will tell you what you have to do. Right, my batting you couldn't leave more than eight inches, I think, unquilted. So, like for this um, this logo, I had to go through the middle of it, yeah, at least just so that I didn't leave such a big area unquilted. Yeah. And then everything else is the same. It's bound the same. Right. Um, did, did you put a hanger on this one in case they wanted to hang it instead? Of... I didn't. That's probably a good idea. Yeah. I should probably put it Because this would be so cool to be like a piece of art, too. Right. Yeah. yeah. I think quilts can be art, right? Yeah. And then to make it into a pillow, you would just take your block, like however you want to do it. You've got it interfaced, your t-shirt quilt block. You've got it interfaced. Just put whatever size borders you want to on it. And then use Lisa's tutorial and put the uh, zippered backing on. The hidden zipper. And um, I didn't do anything fancy to it. It's just, uh, I can show you, show you the insides. I always insides. like to put uh, my pillow form a lot bigger than the pillow right. itself. So if you can go about two, at two, least two, two inches. inches. Right. I've already done four yeah. or two. Well, and actually <laughs> this one has a bed bed pillow in yeah. it. So sometimes when yeah. your bed pillows get a little, yeah. you know, worn out and yeah. flat, then you can repurpose that stuffing into another pillow. So all I did here was just take oh. my my t-shirt, put put the borders on, and then just put the backing on just like any uh, pillow on using your tutorial yep. and doing the zipper. Yep. That is awesome. Yes, this is a great quilt. It's one of the best t-shirt quilts I've ever seen. So I begged uh, Kathy to come on and do this, but she's more than ha willing to help me do all these tutorials. And I love having her on. She's so good at explaining everything. And I really appreciate you coming on and doing another well, tutorial. Okay. And I'm sure she'll do more. Yeah. So and I think people... we have a cross stitch one coming up. Right. And if people have questions, put them in the comments. I'll go back and look at them and um, do do comments. You know, if, if there's something you want to see or or whatever, we talked about maybe doing one with the pictures. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. so that'll probably be a future tutorial. So if you want to see things like that, uh, you know, put it in the comments and we'll try to go back and answer some of those if we can. Yeah, just let us know what you want to see. We, we have a ton of ideas for tutorials, but we like to know what you want to see as well. All right. Thanks everyone for joining us. Make sure you like this video so you see more. Make sure you subscribe and thanks for joining in. Bye now.